Belief in black magic is so ingrained in Southeast Asian society that you don't need to look far to find it. Trust in the healing power of magic to boost their career, power or relationship is not uncommon. These are the desires that drive people to the doors of a shaman. But if luck brings them to the door of this particular shaman, not only would they not be able to walk out alive, but beheaded in the most horrific way imaginable. Let's unfold the case of Mona Fandi. Nur Mazna Ismail was born on the 15th of January 1956 in Kanga, Malaysia. She was raised in a very wealthy family and performed as a pop singer from a young age. In an attempt to gain more popularity, she adopted Mona Fandi as her stage name. She did achieve some national success with a couple of her songs. <laughs> But her career didn't take off as well as she hoped for, so eventually left the music industry. Mona Fandi married her husband and biggest fan, Mohammed Noor Afandu Abdul Rahman. She became heavily engrossed into spiritual witchcraft influenced by her husband, and soon Mona was involved in black magic activities. Eventually, this became her career, and the couple started offering their services to high profile people, some of which included well known politicians. Of course, their services come with a heavy price tag and soon money started to roll in for them. An assemblyman for Central Pahang State, Datuk Mazlan Idris. He was educated in the United States and was an ambitious politician from the ruling United Malays National Organization Party. In the summer of 1993, he soon became one of Mona's clients as he wanted to boost his political career and climb the party ladder. Mona convinced Maslin he'll be invincible if he had three items in his possession. A talisman, cane and songkot which belongs to the late Indonesian president, Sukarno. Mona said she was able to provide him with these items, but she demanded 2.5 million ringgit in return. Maslin then paid the couple 500,000 ringgit as well as 10 pieces of land as a deposit. The couple then asked Maslin to participate in a ritual they had prepared for him. First he was asked to lay on the floor with his eyes closed. Then Mona placed some flowers on his body. He was asked to patiently wait for the money to fall from the sky. Unfortunately, the money didn't fall to the ground but instead it was the blade of an axe. Maslin was immediately decapitated and partially skinned. He was then dismembered into 18 pieces and buried in the ground on the property owned by Maslin, which was also very close to where the couple lived. The day after the brutal murder, Mona went on a shopping spree, treating herself to a Mercedes-Benz and even had a facelift. Maslin was reported missing on the 22nd of July 1993 after he had withdrawn 300,000 ringgit from the bank. Through further investigation, the police were able to trace it back to Mona and her husband, Roman. They immediately became the prime suspects. When they were brought in for questioning, Jeremy, who was the couple's assistant, made a statement to the police, which led to the discovery of Maslan's remains. On the 22nd of July 1993, Maslan's dismembered body was found to be buried six feet deep in a pit covered with cement. Buried in the pit, they also found knives, axe, and a pistol which belongs to Maslin. Mona, her husband Roman, and Jeremy were subsequently arrested. The three were tried in Temelo High Court in 1995. They were charged with murder under Section 302 of the Malaysian Penal Code, and this carries a mandatory death sentence. The trial was highly publicized because the attractive couple, Mona and Roman, in their 40s were accused of a brutal black magic related murder of a politician. The trial lasted for 65 days with 76 witnesses. The prosecutor said that money was the main motive for the killing. It only took the seven juries 70 minutes to reach a verdict of guilty against all three defendants. Mona, Roman, and Jeremy were given the death sentence of which they'll be hanged until they were dead. After being handed the death sentence, Mona said, I am happy and thank you to all Malaysians. She was photographed with a big smile on her face as usual as she was taken to prison. Throughout her trial, she wore highly expensive and stylish clothing and always smiling. 
She seemed to really enjoy the attention she was receiving. All three of the defendants appealed, but on the 13th of April 1999, their appeals were dismissed. A year later, in April 2001, the pardons board turned down their pleas for clemency. They were due to be hanged at dawn on the 2nd of November 2001 at Kajeng Prison. The day before they were due to be hanged, Mona at the age of 45 and Roman at 44 years old were given an 8-hour visit with a dozen members of their families. They spent this time advising their children from both their own marriage and their previous marriages to grow up to be good people and they need to take care of themselves. A senior prison officer has said there was a lot of crying and hugging as they spoke to their children and family for the last time. In Malaysia, it's a normal practice for prisoners due to be executed to be given the food of their choice as their last meal, in which Mona requested for KFC. Just before dawn on the 2nd of November 2001, the three were taken to be executed. They were asked what their last words are, in which Mona chillingly said, I will I never, will die. never die. die. They were handcuffed, hooded and legs strapped. The nooses were adjusted around their necks and at 5.59am, the drop fell and the three plummeted down. The bodies were left hanging for an hour before they were taken down. Furthermore, an autopsy was conducted to confirm their death, after which they were then buried. One official publicly said the trio expressed no remorse. They didn't say anything. They were very calm, just like those who accept they are going to die. After the execution, Mazlan's wife told reporters that knowing justice has been served, she can now put the past behind and continue to carry on with her life with her children. Thank you so much for watching. Please do let me know what your thoughts are on this case. I hope I earned myself a subscription and a recommendation. Please do stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.